when we left off the other day, we, uh, as we were saying, we did create this kind of little interactive type of experience where we have a rollover that plays a sound. <coughs> activate it. So today we're going to kind of create an intro scene um, and a credit scene. All right. So to do that, we're going to start off by going to the window pull down and select scene. All right. So this will open up. Um, a palette of scenes and it's basically a scene is you can think of kind of like a page in a book where you know you have your content and it's gonna lead from one to another so let's start by naming this one that we already have here uh, soundboard because this would represent our, our actual soundboard um, and for I guess people who missed the first class let's just use the text tool and actually for everybody Let's just go in here and we'll label this scene as soundboard. All right. So from that, we can. That way, when we're clicking and navigating through the scenes, we know which one is which. All right. So we just use the text tool and made a, a, a little text box there that says soundboard. All right. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the bottom of my scene palette and I'm going to click on the icon that says add scene. So that's basically like creating a new page. Um, I want that to be the first scene. So I'm going to move it up and I'm going to double click it and name it to intro. All right. So on our first scene, we'll have kind of just some directions on what to do and what this project is. So right now I will also name that or label it on here just so that as we're navigating through, we know what we're looking at here because this really won't have much else on it. And then we can use the, um, some of the shape tools to make a primitive type of button. All right. You could always create a button in Photoshop or something and bring it in here as an image. But for right now, all we need to do is to make this uh, the shape here and then we're going to turn it into a button. So anybody remember how we turned uh, an image into a button the other day? Evan? Uh, but how do we get that? What, what menu or where do we find that? Modify, modify good. So we're going to say modify, convert to symbol, and we'll call it a button. All right. All right, so now we have our intro scene, our soundboard scene, and now we're going to do a credit scene. So I'm going to select the, the new scene button again. I'm going to name it. I'm going to drag it to the end. And then I'm going to type on here credits. All right, and we are going to do another button on here also so that when it's done with the credits that we can um, go back to the first scene or start over. So I'm going to select this button and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. And actually, maybe we would call this like credits button. And actually, while we're doing that, we'll make another button on the soundboard. Uh, on this scene here, and we'll make this a button. And we can call this soundboard button or SB button. And we'll put that on here. So now we'll give this as we're going through our our game here will be able to click between the intro, the soundboard, and the credits. Mm -hmm. Let's. So we have these three scenes set up. We have our intro, we have our kind of our soundboard, and we have our credits. All right. Um, and now we're ready to apply actions. 
So we're going to kind of get a little bit technical and into some coding, but um, Animate kind of provides an easy way to do that. So if we go to Window and then select, where is it? We want Actions. There it is. Or if, I guess you could press F9. All right. Everybody have this window open? Press F9 or go to Window and select Actions. The first thing we're going to do is to pr um, create what's called a stop action. Because if we were to test this movie right now, look at what happens. Anybody guess why this is happening? We have three scenes which are just being viewed after each other. All right. So it's just rifling through them and showing all three scenes at once. All right. So what we're going to do is in each scene, and we'll start with our intro scene. All right. So navigate to your intro scene, which should be the first on your, uh, your list there. And then we're going to go over to here, uh, these little, actually they look like uh, HTML tags. They're called code snippets. What happened to mine? Maybe I pressed it twice. All right. So we're going to go to action script and then timeline navigation. And we're just going to double click this stop at this frame. Um, so this code is actually pretty simple. We could type it in, but double clicking on it is a lot easier, right? So the code is stop, bracket, bracket, semicolon. So now if we go and test our, our movie, it's going to stop on our first scene. However, it doesn't go anywhere from there, right? So, um, but let's just actually kind of anticipating, should we do the button or should we do all of our other stop actions first? Which would, the stop, I would kind of stop actions, right? So we're kind of, instead of doing something differently, we're going to go back and we're going to kind of do something that we kind of know a little bit better. So we're going to go to sound the, the next scene and we'll just apply the stop action in here and then go to our credit scene and we'll apply our stop action there. All right. So this will eliminate our things from looping. Yes, Matt. Um, go to window and then, or are you in the actions window already? So you're going to find that the little brackets here next to the question mark. Wait, I've got another phone. Oh, well, let's don't switch gears on me yet. I got to stay focused here. All right. So now that we have these stop actions, now we're going to go and apply the actions to the buttons. So let's go back to our intro scene. And does anybody see a timeline navigation action that may do what we want to do here? What do we think we want to use here to take us from the first scene to the second one? Go to, well, go to frame would be somewhere in the timeline. That's a good guess, but that. Oh, well, and that probably would work in this case also. Go to next scene. All right, next frame would be within the timeline. All right, so that's not really going to be the best thing either, Evan. We could do next scene. Um, yeah, actually, I guess that could probably work. Um, so we could select our button. All right, and that's important because we want the action to apply on the button, not just in general. So if we then select go to next scene and play or I was actually using go to scene because then you can specify exactly which scene, but as long as you have them ordered properly, then I guess that should uh, work fine. All right, so let's double click this. So I am click clicking on go to next, actually, no, not next frame. I chose the wrong thing. Go to next scene and play. And it asks us to create an instance name. It's going to do that for us. We can press OK to that. And now let's see if that works. So if we do control enter, so we're on our intro, and now it takes us to our soundboard. Yes. Uh, with the you select the button by choosing the black arrow and then clicking on the button. 